Hello friends, today we are going to see the trick to identify operating reason of page 80. So before we start with the sum, first let us see the contents that we are going to discuss in this video. We are going to see two types of sum. One is a one marks question and second is a two marks question. One marks question will be that question where you will be given with all the parameters and just you have to identify in which reason your transistor is okay and the two marks question is that question where you will be given with the circuit diagram and from the circuit you have to identify the parameters and then you have to identify the reason of operation okay so let's see this type of sum one by one so the first sum is from ec 2004 if for a silicon npn transistor the base to emitter voltage is 0.7 volt and the collector to base voltage is 0.2 volt then the transistor is operating in the normal active mode saturation mode inverse active mode or cutoff mode okay so for all this type of sum whether it is one marks question or it is a two marks question we just have to take note of this table this table says that if your base to emitter junction is forward biased and if your collector to base junction is reverse biased then your transistor will be operating in active region if it is reversed that is if base to emitter junction is reverse biased and collector to base junction is forward biased then we will say it is in reverse active region okay this was forward active region this is reverse active region okay if both the junction j1 and j2 is forward biased then we will say the transistor is operating in saturation region if it is reverse basically if both the junctions are in reverse bias then we will say that the transistor is operating in cutoff region okay so let's see how we can use this in this type of sum okay so here you can see we have vb as vbe as 0.7 volt right and we have vcb as 0.2 volt okay so for all this type of sum where you have all the parameters given you just have to draw this diagram of your transistor okay here you can see the transistor is npn and you have given that VBE is 0.7 you know that your, this is your emitter this is your base this is your collector okay we know that VBE is 0.7 volt so we will say here we have a 0.7 volt okay you just have to draw whatever the voltage you are given along with your transistor okay so it is 0.7 volt and we know vcb is 0.2 volt okay it means vcb the voltage between collector and base is 0.7 volt okay so here we will get 0.2 volt okay note one thing that i have drawn the positive terminal of battery in the collector side while the negative side in the base side you can see that vcb it means that c is at the higher potential while base is at the lower potential similarly you can see the base is at higher potential emitter is at lower potential okay. base is at higher potential emitter is at lower potential okay so now if you observe this figure you can see that n is getting negative voltage p is getting positive voltage then we will say that this j1 is forward bias okay and for this junction you can see that p is getting negative voltage and n is getting positive voltage so we will say that this junction j2 is in reverse biased okay so from the table you can check out that for the condition j1 forward bias and j2 reverse bias the transistor will operate in active region okay that is forward active region okay you can also say this reason as normal active reason okay so we will say the correct option will be this a1 okay so this was the one marks question now let's move ahead to the two marks question so now you can see this is a two marks question where you have given with circuit and you have to identify the parameter first and then using the parameter you have to judge whether your transistor is in active reason saturation reason or cutoff reason okay so you can see the question is for the bjt circuit shown assume that the beta of the transistor is very large okay and vbe is 0.7 volt the mode of operation of the bjt is and you can see this question is of ec 2007 one thing from the question you can get is that beta is very large okay beta we get it is very large so we will say that ib is nearly equals to zero so we will say that we know that this equation ie is equals to ib plus ic so here we know that ib is approximately equals to zero so we will say ie is approximately equals to ic okay so whenever you get the condition that beta is very large then you will 
will assume uh, IB as 0 ampere and you will directly use the equation as IE equals to IC okay so now let's use this parameter in this circuit to get our answer okay so we get to know that IB is equals to 0 okay so whatever is your IC that will be your IE also okay so the very first step to solve all this type of circuit problem you have to check whether your transistor is on or off okay so for that what you will do you will open all this terminal and you will check for whether your VBE is greater than VBE active or not so you can see VBE active okay so you can see VBE active is nothing but 0 0.7 volt okay so if you open all these points you will get that VB as 2 volt and VE as 0 volt okay so you can see VBE is 2 volt which is greater than 0 0.7 volt so we will say our transistor is in on and you can neglect the option that is cutoff reason okay as you know transistor is in on condition so transistor cannot go in cutoff reason okay so now we get to know that our transistor is in on condition now we can apply keyword very easily okay so here we will get VBE active that is nothing but 0 0.7 volt if you apply KVL at this input side, we will get minus 2 plus 0 0.7 volt plus 1 KIE. Here always we will assume that current is in milliampere, voltage is in volt and a resistor is in kilo ohm. Okay. So here we will assume that resistor is in kilo ohm. So we will write only 1 into IE. IE is nothing but IC only. Okay is equals to 0 so here we will get IC as 1.3 milliampere as you can see 2 minus 0 0.7 will be 1.3 as we have assumed IC basically current as in milliampere so we will get the current in milliampere okay so now we get the IC current now we can apply KVL at this output side okay if we apply KVL at output side we will get minus 10 plus 10 IC plus VCE plus IE it is nothing but IC only is equals to 0 so you can see here we have 11 IC so we will get VCE as 10 minus 11 IC okay IC we know it is 1.3 milliampere so we will get 10 minus 11 into 1.3 okay note one thing here we are not writing milliampere as we have already considered that our all resistor is in kilo ohm so kilo ohm into milliampere will be neglected so here we will get only 11 into 1.3 okay so here if we simplify it we will get 10 minus 11 into 1.3 it is nothing but 14.3 so we will get minus 4.3 volt as our vc okay now we have to find out VCB as you know we want two voltage from that we can identify which junction is in forward biased or which junction is in reverse biased. So you can see the two voltage was VCB and VBE. VBE we know we don't know VCB okay so VCB will be simply VCE minus VBE. VCE we know it is nothing but minus 4.3 minus VBE VBE is nothing but 0 0.7 volt so we will get minus 5 volt okay so here you can see VCB is in negative and we know VBE okay so if you draw this transistor diagram you will get this is your NPN right so you can see that emitter is outward so you will say this is N this is P this is N okay so N P N here you have 0 0.7 volt okay this is plus this is minus and here you have in negative voltage that means you have here VCB it is nothing but minus 5 volt okay so from this we can say that it is nothing but like this okay negative at this side positive at this side with the magnitude of 5 volt okay so we will say that both the junction is in forward bias as you can see plus 2 plus minus 2 minus plus 2 plus minus 2 minus so we will say that both the junction is in forward bias so we will say the transistor is operating in saturation reason okay so our correct option will be this B option now to reduce your time you can do one more thing that is you can apply KVL directly on this side okay to get your VCB as you know this is your collector this is your base okay so here it will be VCB okay plus will be here and minus will be here if you apply KVL you will get the same answer directly that is VCB is equals to minus 5 volt okay so your sum of the steps will get reduced okay so Let's see some another sums to get better idea of this trick.
So now let's say this sum, this was asked in double E 2007. The common emitter forward current gain of transistor is beta F is equals to 100. The transistor is operating in which one of the option, okay? So the twist in this question, you can see now in place of NPN, we have a PNP transistor, okay? So now let's see what will be the changes that we have to take care, okay? So one thing you have to take care is that now your emitter is here, base is here and collector is here. How I identify it is PNP as you can see this arrow is towards your base, okay? It is not towards your emitter side, okay? So you will say that this is your P, this will be your M, this will be your P, okay? So this is your PNP transistor, okay? So the very first step was to check whether your transistor is on or not, okay? So for that, you will remove your transistor from all these points. So you will calculate your VE, VB, okay? So here you can see you have VE as 10 volt, VB as 0 volt, okay? So here you will compare your VEB, not VBE, okay? So here you can see VEV is nothing but 10 volt which is greater than 0.7 volt. So we will say that your transistor is on. Okay, here in the question it is not mentioned your VEB active voltage but if in the question it is not mentioned you can assume it as 0.7 volt. Okay, so here from this step we get to know that transistor is on. Now we can move further to calculate our IB and IC. Okay. So now if you apply KVL at this input side, what we will get, this is our VEB. So here we will write it as 0.7 volt plus towards emitter minus towards base. Okay. In NPN, it was opposite. Okay. So take note of it. Okay. So if you apply KVL, we will get minus 10 plus 1K into IE. It is nothing but 1. IE is nothing but IB plus IC. Here we don't have beta as very large. So here we will consider IE as IB plus IC. Okay. So IB plus IC. We have IE as IB plus IC. But we know that IC is nothing but beta IB. Right. So we have IB plus beta IB. Now if we take IB common, we will get 1 plus beta as IE. Okay. So here we will replace directly IE as IB 1 plus beta okay beta we know it is 100 so it will be 101 IB okay so 101 into IB plus 0 0.7 plus 270 into IB note one thing here we are not writing kilo ohm as we have considered our current in milliampere okay so it will be is equals to 0 so if we simplify it we will get IB as 10 minus 0 0.7 it is nothing but 9.3 upon 270 plus 101 it will be nothing but 371 okay it is nothing but in milliampere okay so now if we simplify it we will get 9.3 upon 371 so it is nothing but 0 0.025 okay so here we have ib as 0 0.025 milliampere okay so here we have IB, we can find out IC very easily. That is IC will be nothing but beta IB, which is nothing but 100 multiply by IB, which is nothing but 0 0.025 milliampere. Okay, we will leave as it is. If it is required to simplify, then we will simplify it. Okay, so now let's apply the KVL here directly. We are not going to find out VCE first, then we will find out VCB. Here we will directly find VCB directly. As we know, it is nothing but your C, it is nothing but your base. So here we will get plus minus VCB. Okay. And let me tell you, this is very risky. As you can see here, we have to consider the current direction also. As you can see, the transistor is PNP. So that current will flow from here to here to here. Okay. So you can see here we will have plus, here we will have minus, here we will have plus and here we will have minus. So whenever you are finding VCB directly, you should take care of positive and negative also. Okay. So if we apply KVL at this way, so we will get minus 270 IB minus VCB plus 1 into IC, okay, equals to 0. So here we will get VCB as IC minus 270 IB, okay. I see we know it is nothing but 100 IB, so 100 IB minus 270 IB, okay. So here we will get minus 170 IB. Okay, so we have to multiply by minus 170 multiply by 0 
here we are not considering milliampere as we have already considered kilo ohm directly so here we will get 170 multiplied by 0 0.025 so we will get 4.25 volt okay so here we have minus 4.25 volt as our vcb so now we will draw the diagram this this like this here we have p and p this is your emitter this is your base this is your collector we know that our veb is 0 0.7 volt so here we will directly say our veb is 0 0.7 volt note one thing here i have drawn the positive at this side as we are saying veb okay so e is at higher potential b is at lower potential okay and we also know that vcb is minus 4.2 5 volt okay so it is in minus so all the terminals will be reversed okay so here we will get minus plus okay this is 4.25 volt so you can see that positive is getting negative negative is getting positive so this junction will be reverse bias and for this you can see n is getting n p is getting p so this will be in forward bias so we will say that from the characteristics of this junction we will say our transistor is operating in forward active region which is nothing but d option okay so you can clearly see if you follow this criteria you are going to solve this type of sum very easily without any mistake and very quickly also so that's it for today thank you guys